a lot of whole food plant-based speakers sound very convincing, but what do the long-term studies say? When you look at all the unbiased, large, long-term nutrition studies, do they show that whole food plant-based eaters have significantly less disease and live longer than people eating diets that include animal products? Yes, they live longer. I just told you about the, you know, the, the situation there. Uh, <clears throat> And there are some other studies in the EPIC, so-called EPIC study in Europe that's shown somewhat similar, similar kinds of data. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, they live longer, but more importantly, rather than just talking about the length of life, which is okay metric for obviously for obvious reasons, uh, more importantly, they don't suffer the diseases, you know, in the last few years of their life. People who use a keto diet, if I can use that, that word, or met, you know, guys like that, they're the ones who are going to spend the last 10, 15 years in and out of the hospital, taking all kinds of drugs, having to deal with the, with the diseases that are eventually going to kill them prematurely. What are the major problems with eating animal products? Well, the major problem is very simply, a lot of people like to say it's due to the saturated fat. I'm not one of those uh, people. Uh, saturated fat is uh, somewhat uh, biochemically inert compared to polyunsaturated fats, which is present in class, that suggests that eating saturated fat as much as one's okay. Let's say saturated fat tends to be mostly found in animal foods, polyunsaturated and plant foods. So it's, it's a, we have a dilemma here. Saturated fats maybe not being so bad, polyunsaturated fat uh, supposedly being good. But that, that impression arose when we're looking at the relation, the correlation between saturated fat intake and let's say heart disease or colon cancer or breast cancer, higher saturated fat, okay, more of those diseases. Higher polyunsaturated fat coming from plants mostly, less disease. So there was a lot of a, a significance given to that observation in those days, but we now know, we now know that's the way it works in the whole food. If we take out the polyunsaturated fat out of the plants, put it in a bottle. And that's the way we use a lot of that stuff as added oil, for example. That's not good. We have an entirely different product. The oil that's present in that situation is so-called omega-6, pro-inflammatory, and uh, that can lead to all kinds of problems. So, uh, but when that oil is in the presence of plants, the whole food, it's a very different situation. Everything is working together. The saturated fat in animals, it looks like it has a nice relationship with heart disease and so forth in these uh, observational studies, but actually, and I've just written a new book on this, The Future of Nutrition, and I've tra traced out some of this argument there. It turns out the higher the saturated fat intake, also that can be accounted for as higher consumption of animal protein. And this animal protein is not the saturated fat, it's animal protein that causes, a rate, causes blood cholesterol levels to go up. Plant protein does not tend to do that. So you see a sharp uh, difference between animal and plant protein. Uh, that, the question concerning the animal protein has never surfaced very much. We don't talk about it. We talk about it either you know, the kind of fat or the kind of carbohydrate. It's really the animal protein. It's not the animal protein by itself. It certainly has its own properties. And I can elaborate on that. It's going to take too long here. You know, all the mechanisms that occur under those circumstances but it's, it's actually a virtual worship, a reverence for animal protein that people want to consume it. The more, the better. That's why I started out my career, by the way. I came from a farm. I went to, to graduate school and did my doctoral dissertation on, on for the purpose of advancing the consumption of more animal protein. But it was strictly the research that I got involved in, it showed me exactly the opposite. So, um, the real question is not the saturated, unsaturated fat dilemma, argument, contest that we're, we're involved in so much because it's so confounded. But what is what what form those uh, nutrients happen to be uh, consumed in? Uh, we got to back off, look at the whole food situation and then we can see the results that we get. So it's animal protein. It's our, it's our impression that animal protein is said to be high quality that's a misnomer too. That was based on an equation that was developed way back in 1920s. 
by a certain professor from the University of Illinois, H.H. Mitchell, saying the higher the, the protein that gets into our system, the greater the, the absorption of that protein and the greater the retention of that protein, it stimulated a body growth rate, sounds good. They never took into consideration, they didn't know in that, they never consideration that when that body growth rate is faster, that means more heart disease, more breast cancer, you know, in, in terms of a larger picture. So it's really, I would argue that it's our, our kind of, I call us to use this word, but it's a reverence. It's a reverence and respect for animal protein as being a high quality. Everybody wants more. That's the way it's been for more than a hundred years. It's not true. Do you recommend bariatric surgery for some patients? Uh, that's a hard one. I wish uh, you could ask that to my son who co-authored the China study with me. He's a physician. Uh, he's been with a bariatric surgery uh, group in the University of Rochester not because he was interested in that, nor am I. He was there because they gave him the opportunity of doing research, continuing on with some of the work that I've been doing with whole food fat based diets. No, I, very actually surgery, yes. You know, it, it does produce results in people. I'm not nearly familiar enough as I'd like to be to answer that question. But basically, uh, interestingly, people who ha even had that operation still drift back you know, to lose, to gain the weight they, they had gained previously. Uh, also, it's an excuse. It's an excuse not to face up to dietary choice and just changing their lifestyle. 